I'll do an update today. Uh, first thing I want to say is these little lamps that I showed on the last um, video. Um, this isn't a market employee. <laughs> it's simply something I just noticed. Because you put the magnets on the back of these, and obviously I'm on an a Apple, uh, Apple Mac Air, um, the magnets actually stick to them. So they're quite a handy light. As you can see, my light's pretty poor at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll stick one of these on the left side. That looks right. So I'll put one on the right as well, see if that improves it. But the point is, they literally just stick to the screen. Now, it may damage your Mac, so I'll just put that out there. Because um, magnets and computer equipment don't normally work too well. But I just want to point out, it worked quite well. No, I was quite happy with that. Anyway, um, so yeah, the weekly update. So my back's still playing up. I'm still uh, waiting to see my specialist, which will happen on the 1st of March, which is sort of limiting my ability to fly backwards and forwards. But the good thing is it's allowed me to actually get most of the paperwork up to date. Um, one of the problems I've had with work is when I, was, when I started, um, basically, I was taking on, taking on on November for it, but the guy that had left had left in January, and the first submissions were due in November. So the same month you start, you're already having a submissions and catching up with accounts um, for the entire year. And that's continued and continued all the way up till April when all accounts are due. So it's been stupidly busy. Um, but the big problem I had was people wanting to go to meetings, but they're all over the UK, and a lot of time you can do it over the phone, or you can do it through Skype, or do it through email. Um, and it's got to that point now where, A, my, my back went out, so that sort of halted a lot of it. And at the same time, I've managed to catch up with most of the work. I mean, it's like some of the stuff I've done this week, somebody else could have done it themselves. But because I'm not traveling around, I've had the time to actually prep, prep them so that they've got more time to do the task that they're supposed to be doing. So it makes life easier for everybody. So, yeah, that's, that's one of the things this week. Um, been looking at the outsourcing stuff as well. I'm going to get back into that. I've um, been talking with Carlos about that. And I've got to give Justin a ring about doing the um, baggage stuff, moving stuff from the UK to Spain. Uh, that's something we've been talking about for a while now, but I think it's about time we started doing something about it. Um, why didn't I do it previously? Well, as I mentioned before, one of my sites that generates a regular income, it went down the, down the toilet when the, the server, server host decided to make some changes. It destroyed the site. Um, and then I've had to do a full upgrade. It couldn't be upgraded with the data in it. I had to basically overhaul the whole thing from scratch, which has took about a month as well. That's now up and running. Um, I just need to hit that with some marketing, and that one's away again. And I can leave that for the next five years, hopefully. Um, so things have been extremely busy. Um, the problems in the UK relating to the inheritance side so the big thing for me, I wasn't that fussed on the inheritance in the first place. It was more concerned around making sure certain individuals were capable of looking after themselves and going to be able to carry on uh, regardless. But certain things have happened to the point where I just sort of went, you know what, leave it to the lawyer to do. Just let me know when um, I get my percentage and I don't really want to know anymore. Um, it sounds a bit... Uh, but. The problem is you get to a certain point where you're fed up with dealing with people's um, views instead of actually, they don't, it's very peculiar. It brings out the worst in people, but at the same time, some of these individuals have always been like it. So, I mean, for me, I, I see it as my parents' money anyway, where these people assume it's theirs, you know, it's very odd, but whatever. Um, so that's getting there, leaving that with a solicitor, and whatever comes out of that will will be used for property in Spain. Also, had, um, some people contact me about managing some properties in Spain. That's something else we're looking at doing as well. Because um, we already have someone managing for other people, but it'd be nice to get that up to about 20, 20 to 50 properties that we manage. 
Um, so that's getting there. Same with some of the renovation work. We've we've had a few renovation projects come through. Um, I think last week somebody wanted air conditioning installations, brand new installs. Uh, there's a couple of kitchen fits, a couple of um, bathroom refits. There's a lot of other stuff going on in the background. So things are moving along. Um, it's just getting to a point where I can do this full time or the work in the UK, they recognize that I don't need to be in the UK or they, they recognize I only need to be there like three days a week. Oh, sorry, three days a month. I mean, I don't need to be there weekly. It just seems stupid to go into an office just to sit there so that they can see you in the office. Um, but we'll see how it carries on. I mean, a lot of the team have actually changed in work since I started. <laughs> they were a new team when I started and several of the key people have already gone. Um, so once they replace, might get some people that are either visionary in the sense of the, the understand um, home working in the sense of lean, lean management and being more productive. Like now, although it's half past 11, 12 o'clock here, I'll be up at um, half past eight in the morning because I've got a conference call at nine and then I'm going through a load of uh, tasks tomorrow to prepare uh, April's accounts. So the point being is I'm working all day tomorrow and I was working at three o'clock on Sunday Sunday night, three, well, Monday morning, 3 a.m. I finished um, preparing stuff for this week for somebody who's actually out doing some surveys. So there's a lot of work going on at the same time. This is what I'm saying. If you, if you say, well, we want you here Monday, Friday, and you go, okay, eight hours a day. Ah, oh, yeah, but we need you to be... It's like flexibility goes two ways. It goes two ways. If you expect me to do an eight-hour day and do four hours traveling a day for free, it ain't happening. I'm not, not in my 20s anymore. And the fact is, I've given up enough of my life already for commuting um, to pointless meetings. <laughs> It's, I only want to go to meetings that are needed. I don't need to drive drive somewhere for two and a half hours to sit and look at a spreadsheet I sent to somebody on an email. They should be able to understand the spreadsheet itself anyway. That's the whole point. If they can't, they're in the wrong job. Anyway, that's enough grumbling about work. So things are progressing. The weather's been a little bit windy here in Spain. Um, Philippine stuff is progressing. Oh, I got, got invited to do a video for a supermarket as well here in Spain and a couple of other things. I've had a couple of videos for another YouTube channel. Um, they want to sponsor some stuff on that, so I'm happy with that as well because I wasn't really pushing it, but come through and ask me if I want to do it and want to pay me to do it. So, okay. Um, so things are moving along. Um, I've got to admit, it's been a bit slow in the sense that Things start moving forward, then something was knocks us back a little bit. Um, my father's passing affected a lot of things this year because it's it's knocked a lot of things out of sync. I was surprised to hear that I'd been at the company I've been at for seven months. I thought I'd only been there three months. That's how that's how busy I've been. I hadn't even noticed half a year has gone um, because it's just been so intensive with stuff going on. It's uh, traveling around, dealing with, uh, legal issues around the, the estate, dealing with work stuff, um, trying to get back to Spain, etc. And no wonder my, my back gave away at a certain point. Um, but now it's sort of getting into a routine of like, okay, where do we want to go from here? And we're now in a better position to do it. A few people have asked me about the Brexit stuff. I really don't care about Brexit, I'll be honest with you. Um, the reason being is the UK has become so embedded in Europe. At the same time, you've got the problem in the UK where we lack any real leadership. Um, and I'm not going to expand out on that too much. I'm not just talking about politics. I see in a lot of industries, I work with a lot of industries and I see the same problems and the same styles of leaderships and same problems because a lot of people work on business as usual. Work as long as you can, get your pension, that's it. Don't rock the boat, doesn't matter if it's working or not working. Um, it's just the way things are. It's not something I'm saying, 
I agree with, disagree with, whatever. It's quite simply just the way it is. Uh, I'm not going to change it. Um, part of this is actually recognizing you can only do your bit. If it doesn't get pushed forward from there, don't worry about it anymore. <laughs> you know, I've had years of trying to push change in in companies, and they simply don't want the change because of different reasons. Some of it's unionized. Some of it, people have been doing it for twenty years. So, um, why would the, why would your new way be better than what they've been doing uh, for twenty years? Because it's an industry standard, and you haven't actually been doing it to legal compliance or anything for twenty years. There's some reasons, um, but I'm not here to change the world. And that's one of the things I will say is I do recommend people actually lighten up a little bit. Uh, that's one thing I will say. I know we talk about MGTOW now and again. One of the things I do stress, I understand where MGTOW is coming from. I understand that if I wasn't married now, I'd probably be single. I would because quite simply... I don't need any headaches. Um, and a lot of the headaches come from relationships. At the same time, if you're actually trying to build a nest egg and a future for yourself, so you can travel, do what you want, you can have somebody else in that relationship that can take your future away from you. Um, so I do understand a lot of why people um, are mixed out or thinking about it or utilize the ideology. And I do think, even from a female perspective, not my female perspective, but knowing the females I know here in Spain, um, a lot of them are in their 60s plus, they've had similar experiences um, from partners, you know, alcoholic partners or whatever, um, and the relationships have deteriorated. So they had already planned their own futures and for various reasons they've ended up here alone or decided to stay alone. Um, and it's very similar issues a lot of the time. They're quite simply, relationships are hard work. Myself, I'm happily married. Um, we have a traditional marriage. Um, we have a good family life. We, I mean, for me, my main reasons for getting out of bed in the morning is... Um, as a provider for the family, um, making sure my kids are happy, make sure my kids have got a future, content, make sure my wife's happy. And beyond that, I'm content most of the time anyway. Um, so I, I do want to stress that is life's about enjoying it, and if you're not enjoying it, you're doing something wrong. And uh, there's been a few people asking about the moving over to Spain and. When's the right time to do it? The answer to, there is no right time or wrong time. The wrong time is never doing it. The right time is when you feel you're right to do it, whether you move over for three months, try it, see if you like it and go back, or whether you sell up, move here, and try and make a life of it, knowing full well it may all go wrong. Because the hard bit is when you sit there in the same job, right up to retirement, and think, if I had done that 20 years ago or whatever, myself, I'm not in that situation because it was uh, 2007 I decided to make the change. Now, my regrets was, quite simply, I should have done it in the 90s. Um, I should have made the change then, but would I have changed anything? No, because that's uh, where my daughter in the UK come from. Um, she, she's doing well now. She was actually in Benidorm <laughs> on holiday last week. Um, so there's always a positive out of things. It, in life, it's just how you look at it. Um, but would I have preferred to have traveled abroad in the 90s? Compared to my daughter, the answer is no. But if you ask me, would I have preferred to travel in the 90s rather than be stuck in the UK doing mundane jobs, um, because I've back, back, sorry, that's not, it's not mundane jobs, um, mundane lifestyle, in the sense that my work was pretty much my life, because I used to do um, maintenance on things like Matlan, Sainsbury's, and um, health and safety executive, and other 
large large organizations i used to look after the buildings so i'd go out and do repairs do emergency uh, repairs for robberies and things like that um so i pretty much lived for work then 16 hour a day most of the time um so would i prefer to travel of course i would would i have seen it back then i didn't see it and this is why i started doing these types of videos is because when i went out of the philippines it was like unlocking a new life a life i'd forgotten because i lived abroad all my life up until 1989 um but when i went to school in that in the uk i got into the the mundane lifestyle and routine that often people fall into it was only actually the, ran the random meeting of my now wife April through uh, my friend Vango that everything else happened and now I couldn't go back to it and this is why it's quite funny when you get people trolling about the UK but like, well you're gonna get forced back to the UK and it's like what thing's gonna force me back to the UK I mean if we didn't if we didn't work out in Spain oh, to be honest I'd be in Germany I spent my childhood in Germany. Um, the the UK just doesn't do it for me. It never has done. Um, Germany have a lot of happy thoughts of my childhood. Also, the location and the weather and you know, there's a lot of good things about Germany. Um, Spain. The the biggest headache here is getting your income sorted you get your income sorted the rest of it just falls into place it's just plain sailing immigration process is not overly complex um we're getting april's mother back over on holiday that's another thing um we've also renewed april and the kids uh, passports and visas that's all up to date in there i have to check when they can go for uh, citizenship because i think they can already can i think april's been putting it off She's a bit worried about speaking Spanish, but she deals with people's legal documents on a regular basis. She deals with people's uh, residency and visas and stuff because she does speak Spanish. She gets people here, ask her to do it. You know, a lot of Filipinos ask my wife to do it. A lot of Brits do it, ask her. Um, Dutch people. Um, a lot of the Scandies because she speaks Spanish. And she goes, oh, I'm not that good, but he's, she's She's much better than I am. I got told off by the baker today, actually. Uh, she was saying, because I say it, my son to speak Spanish, cause, not because I can't speak Spanish. <laughs> what it is, he's very quiet when he talks to people. So when we're out, I try and get him to do the shopping. Um, so then he's communicating. So he's in the baker and he's asking for the bread and things like that. He's, she's going, no, you speak, <laughs> you speak Spanish. I was like, okay, but it's not, it's not. It's not me not being able to speak Spanish is the problem. I'm trying to get him to talk louder and be more vocal when he talks to people. Um, but beyond that, yeah, got got told off for not speaking Spanish in the baker, so I have to speak Spanish. So you thought I was using my son. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I mean, that's the sort of thing we have here because it is a bit of a community. Um, we know a lot of the people here. We know the people at the green grocer, the baker, the the butcher, um, the, oh, there's, oh, what's his name? There's a guy that owns two, two uh, restaurants here as well, just literally just at the road here, Cascada and what's the other restaurant he's got? Because he's got them on like, there's two streets like that, he's got one on each. Um, but my son knows him, you know, he always says, oh, Mr. Such and Such, and the way to each other and stuff. And, because my wife used to go there for tea to meet her friend Sylvia. Uh, Sylvia's from the Netherlands, but she's American. Um, so she's got an American accent, but I think she's been in the Netherlands for probably about 20 odd years at least. Um, but the, the point being is we have people all around us, the good friends. We've got uh, Denise downstairs, we've got uh, uh, Igor next door, we've got, uh, yeah. Kim and Carl, the, the beach bar just down the road. There's, there's a nice community here. Um, so I've got to admit, we're happy here. And I can't see that changing. And people going about, oh, well, everything's going to finish with a Brexit. No, it won't. People are still going to come here on holiday. 
And the only thing that would affect this, here's a bit of reality. The UK economy may drop, will drop um, with the Brexit, but people will still save for that holiday. And the thing that may happen here is a reduction in the cost of properties. Because think about it, if you're going to Benidorm for 350 pounds, I don't know, 350 pounds all inclusive, I don't know if that's a week or a fortnight, I have no idea. Um, but the point is, it may become 200 quid because they will reduce the price to adjust to the market. That is how economies work, they adjust to the market. And you hear all this scaremongering from politicians and stuff like that. And there was one today relating to um, Honda out of Swindon. Um, they're saying, oh, it's because of Brexit. And they've had a couple of people say, oh, it's because of Brexit. No, it's because of the EU tariffs got changed, where I don't think there's a tariff between Japan and uh, Europe on the imports. Now, how that happened is beyond me. There must have been some deal relating to BMWs and stuff going out to uh, Japan. Um, and at the same time, it means that the Honda factory will move back to Japan because they're not going to have to build a factory to bypass tariffs and stuff because they can actually manufacture in Japan and it's not going to make any financial difference on the imports. So that's the real reason. And a lot of people go, oh, it's because of Brexit, it's because of this. There are so many things that go on with different things in the background. Some of this stuff's been planned for the last decade and stuff. Um, but all I can say about the Brexit is it's just a shambles. There's no direct leadership in if anything. There is, it's mudslinging, conflict and creating issues. Myself, all I can advise people is, as most of us have done here in Spain, is to switch off from it. We don't bother watching the news about it. We don't know, don't even get into conversation. Even Peter, who's very uh, pro-Brexit, our last conversation on his birthday, we didn't really discuss it that much because it is so much of a shambles. Um, so don't worry about it. Life will go on. Economies will adapt. And even if you had five years of pain, do you know what? It normally drives a positive side once you get the first bit of pain over with anyway. There's always a recovery period. It's just the way economies work. Um, so no, I'm not expecting to be sat here in like a black and white TV show with a stale piece, piece of bread um, with a violin in the background. No, I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, it's a bit weird in the sense that Today we were thinking about what we can do with oranges. Um, there's a lot of oranges and lemons in this area that don't even get picked. I mean, a ridiculous amount. Um, and I'm sitting there thinking we could do something with that. That's, that's something I'm thinking of in the background. <laughs> it's not something I'll be jumping to do something with straight away. But the point being is there will always be something. This area is prime for organics, you know, it feeds a lot of Europe, that will continue regardless of what the economies are doing. So there will always be something going on. Um, the most important thing I would say these days is to worry less. If you've got issues around things that are causing problems in your life, get rid of them. It sounds easy. I know it sounds very, very easy, but like the stuff dealing with my siblings, just leave it with a lawyer. And I told her, I don't really want to know. I just want my my percentage and I don't really want to engage in the, the issues anymore. I've done my bit. I've tried to help. I've tried to uh, get people in their position where I would have left my inheritance in there so they could be, it could just carry on. But to hell with that, with the way some people are. Um, so yeah, things are getting there, life's getting on, and these lamps look pretty good. Um, so yeah, you can see the light works quite well, and they're a cheap option. Anyway, I'll leave you guys to it, but that's pretty much me, and I know I've talked a fair bit. I can't see it without my glasses, but 20 odd minutes as usual. Um, but yeah, life carries on. Um, that's been people ranting on about, or 
you know, expecting my life to be a, in financial guru and stuff. I I have to be very honest here. Financially, I do okay. Um, I have a set of skills which is very in demand in the UK, um, simply because we seem to be losing a lot of people in my industry on a regular basis, and this was something you've got to invest a lot of time in to understand. Um, that's part of my frustration, is that I have a specific skill sets and get brought into companies to bring them up to this century and a lot of people just don't understand it can't see the value in it because they don't understand it and you can get it so far and often you can get everything up and running and they may not carry on with it simply because they don't really understand it um, but it's in demand and it's an industry standard and the reason you do it is from a financial point of view from a compliance point of view, prosecution point of view, avoiding prosecution point of view, and bringing the standard of a business up generally, because uh, you can actually set a lot of stuff up from it. But some people often just see it as something they need to do, but not really understand why they need to do it. Um, so financially, I do okay. Um, what sort of money do you want to earn? On the books, on the books for what I do, you, you're talking the minimum of about forty-eight thousand pounds a year. Off the books, in the sense of doing it as a contractor, minimum of about eighty, ninety thousand, up to maybe about one hundred and twenty thousand pounds a year. One hundred twenty thousand pounds a year. So, as a contractor, there is always work there. Um, so, I hope that answers some people's questions, especially when they're trolling. Just be aware that. I don't need to work a full year. I never have done. Even back in the 90s, I never had to work a full year in my life because of the stuff I do. Um, but that is part and parcel of getting to a position where you can do this sort of stuff, is recognising where there's skill gaps that are paying well. Um, I do a lot of stuff on Excel. And I know some of you guys, I've seen one of you guys do a video today on the Excel. Um, Excel is one of those things that is used in so many ways, and in many cases, a lot of businesses don't know how to use it properly. Um, so there's always opportunities to expand and develop their businesses. Um, and that's, that's one of the things I will say, for me, the SEO side, I'm not up to date with these days, because it kept evolving. I, I know it's going off on another tangent, but SEO stuff with the search engine optimization, because they keep trying to change things, um, it used to be much easier to rank a website. These days, it's much harder, um, and that's one of the problems I've got with the. Like I said, that website I've just spent ages fixing. Um, I've got to get it ranking again, which is one of my frustrations. Because once that starts ranking, it starts just pinging money every day. It just makes it automatically. Um, but can't learn everything at once. And as I said in the other video before, never too old to learn something new. And often it's to your advantage. One of the things I do want to get into here though is photography. I want to do more photography and doing more with the videos. But I've actually got a load of tutorials. I need to get all these accounts out for April. Um, and then once that's done, I'm going to sit and start going through some tutorials and learning a bit more on improving my video stuff and my photography stuff. Um, because I don't mind putting the time in and learning it, it's just having the time in and learning it. That's one of the reasons I went to the Philippines in the first place. Was, um, Well, sorry, it's one of the things I realised when I went to the Philippines the first time, is it gave you time to think. And when you have time to think, you start seeing other things. It's like when sit, people sit and write an e-book, something they may never have had the time or inkling to do previously, but suddenly it generates $100 a month or $50,000 a year. You don't know, because the point is, you don't know till you do it. And I know the ebook uh, environment is quite a busy one these days, but it doesn't mean that there isn't a space for your book, because a lot of books are crap. There's a lot of good books as well. Point being, it all depends on the author and subject. But anyway, that's enough for me. I'm talking too much today. Uh, take it easy. Have a great week. Thanks for watching.